Now at 6.30, the disappearance of Cal Poly student Kristen Smart back in 1996 rocked college campuses in our state. And it made national headlines, but decades later, it appeared that the case had gone cold until a podcaster started heating things up. This is the KTLA 5 News at 6.30. I'm Sandra Mitchell, and tonight for Courtney Friel. And I'm Rick Chambers. Now, 26 years later, her accused killer, Paul Flores, is about to stand trial. And our Mary Beth McDade is live outside the Monterey Superior Courthouse in Salinas with a lot more on this case. Mary Beth. Yes, good evening, you guys. You know, Paul Flores has lived most of his life in Southern California, but now he's up here in Salinas about to stand trial. He's accused of murdering his fellow Cal Poly classmate, Kristen Smart, some 26 years ago. She had a very adventurous spirit. The last place where Kristen was seen was close to the dorms and near Mr. Flores' dorms. I refuse to answer that question based on the Fifth Amendment. We are hopeful that this will lead to the finding of Kristen. In addition to the cadaver dogs that alerted on his dorm mattress early on. I believe he took her life. I mean to announce the arrest of Paul Flores for the murder of Kristen Smart. It's the murder case of a college co-ed that has rocked this country, especially right here in Southern California, where the suspected killer has lived for years. Just to know that this person was not that far from my home is kind of crazy. 26 years ago in May of 1996, Christian Smart, a young, beautiful, and thriving Cal Poly freshman, vanished. The last person she was seen with, fellow freshman Paul Flores. Authorities have long suspected Flores killed the 19-year-old Stockton native while trying to rape her. Witnesses say Flores offered to walk Smart back to her dorm from an off-campus college party. Smart was never seen alive again. We certainly believe that uh, uh, Mr. Flores' dorm room was the crime scene. Many, including the Smart family, feel authorities made a lot of missteps when their daughter first went missing. Campus police waited nearly four days to investigate, thinking she had gone off with friends for the Memorial Day weekend. Finally, a week later, detectives with the DA's office picked up the case and questioned Flores. But they didn't search his room until after he moved out for summer break and his room had been cleaned by the university. Still, authorities say several cadaver dogs alerted on Flores' mattress, the scent of human decay. Flores, who's originally from Torrance, but lived in nearby Arroyo Grande at the time, quickly stopped talking to authorities. And months later, in both a grand jury and a civil deposition, Flores pled the fifth. On the advice of my attorney, I refuse to answer that question based on the Fifth Amendment. Authorities have always been suspicious of Flores' black eye, seen in a booking photo taken two days after Smart's disappearance, when Flores was booked for an outstanding DUI. Investigators questioned him about it, but his story kept changing. He had a black eye, scratches on his hands and knees, and he told one story and then he admitted that was a lie and told another one. Chris Lampert launched a podcast, Your Own Backyard, in September 2019. The podcast is credited with reigniting interest in this case. In 2019, we interviewed several witnesses that had not been previously interviewed. Some of that information came to light through the podcast. This led to a court order to monitor Paul's cell phone and several search warrants being served at various locations, including four Flores family members' homes. Additional warrants were served at Paul's San Pedro home and his father Ruben's Arroyo Grande home. Investigators say damning evidence was found at both, including blood evidence and clothing fibers underneath Ruben's back porch, showing that Smart had once been buried there. Forensic physical evidence was located, and yes, we believe it's it's linked to Kristen. Last spring, Paul was arrested at a San Pedro home where he's lived since 2011 for Smart's murder. It happens to be that he's been lying to us. Then it's really gonna, you know, it's gonna make me feel stupid, you know, because he said he didn't. His father was also arrested for accessory in Smart's disappearance. Now. 26 years later, Paul Flores and his father are set to stand trial. And that trial is expected to get underway tomorrow. We're going to be in the courtroom and bringing you all the details. For now, reporting live here in Salinas, Mary Beth McDade. We're going to send it back to you guys in the studio. All right.